Today, uh, the top, I have to be very careful how I pronounce this in light of a recent dance craze, but um, this, um, this, the topic for today is torque. And torque is the rotational analog of force. And what we will see is that if angular momentum is conserved, that means that there's no external torque. In the same way that if momentum is conserved, that means there's no external force. And we'll see how to calculate torques on a system, and we'll see somebody having a really, really bad day. <laughs> OK. So I'm going to come back over to our friend, the bicycle wheel. And I'm going to attach the honorable rubber bands. OK. And let's see. All right, so if I pull, are you persuaded I'm pulling more on this one than that one? OK. So this one is attached about halfway along the spoke. And this one is much nearer the rim. So anyone have a suggestion of what I could do to this one so that I could stretch that rubber band about the same and yet the wheel wouldn't rotate? Yeah, Zane? Pull it like this. OK, if I pull it straight out, you'll notice then it it doesn't tend to keep the wheel from rotating. If I, if I just pull on one of these and hold tight, if I pull radially, no tendency to rotate. If I pull, whoops, if I pull tangentially, so it would appear that it's the component of the force that is perpendicular to the radius that matters. If I, if I have it symmetrically displaced, I stretch them equally. If I don't stretch them equally, you see what happens. It rotates. So today, what we're going to try to understand is this, when applying forces to an object, what must be uh, the case if the object is not going to rotate? So <clears throat> I have three different examples here of forces that are balanced. And notice, I'm not going to get rid of gravity. There's going to be some kind of, now, I've written this as a normal force being applied at the hub, at the axle. Is that a normal force? Does everyone, so this thing weighs, actually, the rim is full of lead, so it weighs a fair amount. Um, and I have not turned off gravity yet in this region of the room. And so uh, it's feeling gravity down, yet it's not falling down. There is a support force coming up from the wood and transmitted via the axle. And I'm going to call, well, evidently, I felt like it was a good idea to call that a normal force. What would you call it? A holding up force. A holding up force. So I want to try to persuade you why it kind of makes sense to call it a normal force. So let me illustrate the suspension system here. So we have a a ring, and inside that ring, we have the axle. And in fact, as you probably are aware, there's a bunch of ball bearings that surround that axle inside a race. And the ball bearings are there to roll so that no matter which way 
this axle needs to supply a force to hold up the wheel that's attached to the outside and definitely not like a stagecoach wheel like that, but never you mind, I'm lazy. It will push in the normal direction. So suppose that this is now trying to hold the wheel up against gravity, so it's going to have to supply a force of reaction up. So the pressure will be off the ball bearings at the bottom, and they will be all on the ball bearings on the top, and they will be pressing normally against that part to hold up the wheel. So that's why I think it, it actually makes sense to call it a normal force, but it's applied at roughly the center of the wheel. And like normal forces that we've discussed before, the magnitude of that force is whatever it takes to keep the wheel from falling apart. Okay? So in the, in, uh, the diagram here, we have three forces. Gravity is applied at the center, the normal force is applied at the center, and on the left, I'm applying a force this way, not at the center, right? So two of the forces are applied at the axle. This one is definitely not applied at the axle, but what is, what is it, what is it about this force that cares about the axle? That is, if you were to continue the, the direction of this force, the line would pass through the axle. Okay? And so it doesn't have a component that would be perpendicular. It only has a component that's along this line. So those three forces together, if I sum the force of the rubber band and the, and the gravitational force, the, t the sum of those two will be equal and opposite to the normal force so that the net force on this wheel is zero. It also has no tendency to rotate. Now here, we've got a normal force as before, gravity, same as before, but now two forces trying to make the wheel rotate but in opposite senses. And so does it make sense why the normal force has gotten large? Okay, so it has to do what it's got to do in order to keep the wheel from falling down. And then a third example here, we can have a very strong force put very close, balancing against, and that one would tend to want to make the wheel turn, which way is that, um, clockwise? And this force, of just F, but applied farther away, tries to make the wheel turn counterclockwise. And if this is five times as large, but one-fifth as far away from the axle, those two will be in balance and it will not rotate. Okay, here are three examples where it isn't imbalanced. We have, again, gravity and the normal force, but we only have one force that provides a torque that will tend to make this wheel want to spin in the counterclockwise direction. Here we have two, they're the sum of those two forces, they could wipe each other out, but each one of those forces acts in such a way as to try to make that wheel rotate this way in the uh, counterclockwise direction. And what's going on here? Why is that one not balanced? So these forces are equal, and presumably the sum of F plus F plus N is equal to mg, so the sum of the forces is zero, so this thing isn't accelerating. But it would tend to rotate because this force on the rim is more effective than that force that's closer in. And so this would tend to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. <coughs> 